What's up, brothers and sisters? Welcome to dinner party tonight. Uh, today we're going to be making a full meal, which I know people have been wanting, or I'm hoping people have been wanting. We're going to begin with edamame, a crispy, yummy, springtimey beginner uh, that you might have had in a Japanese restaurant, but you can have it at home as well. And then we're going to have braised Asian short ribs, a delicious springtime meal we're creating. We're going to serve it with sort of a scented rice and charred broccoli salad, which is a very big favorite here. Uh, it's very simple and delicious. We're going to finish up with a crazy pineapple dessert. I personally hate pineapples. However, this is a good dessert, and it's really easy. It basically involves a few steps, and your friends will love it. So, Asian-style short ribs. The recipe is basically sort of exactly Samin's recipe from the Netflix show Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat, or something. It's a great show. Like any braise, you have to start this the day before. And what you're gonna do is go to the butcher, Hudson and Charles, if you live in New York, and buy short ribs. The thing about short ribs and brisket and flank steak and all these things is that a cook is really defined by how they handle cheap cuts of meat. So any jerk can cook a ribeye, probably. It's a beautiful piece of meat. But it takes a little bit of love and skill and magic to cook a cheaper cut, like a short rib or a brisket, which I'm, I can't do, actually, I don't know how to do that. But um, so short ribs is kind of a show-offy thing because they're, you have to braise them for hours and it takes a lot of love. So let's begin. Look at how beautiful these are. You're gonna buy bone in because it has, um, has more flavor. And you're gonna liberally salt these. Now because it's Asian style, the marinade has a ton of soy and stuff like that. So you don't wanna put too much salt, but you still wanna salt them salt these. And what this does is it kind of tenderizes the meat. Now you can leave this for a couple of hours, or you can leave it for 30 minutes, or you can leave it overnight. I wouldn't leave it overnight with the, actually with the salt, but a couple hours is good. Unless you have a vacuum sealer, you don't really have to marinate things overnight. How much of it is really penetrating into the meat overnight? I don't know. I mean, probably not that much. My philosophy is, if you have 40 minutes and it has a marinade and you're like, oh, I can't do it, it's gotta be marinated overnight, you can still make it. It's gonna be fine. So here's my salted, and I'm gonna pepper these. I'm just gonna do a little, just a quick seasoning. And this is a very rich dish. The next thing you're gonna do is make the marinade. I'm not gonna look at the recipe because I know that it has these things. I just looked at the names of the things which is soy sauce. I have this fancy soy sauce. Um, Kikoman is a very fascinating company. We've discussed Kikoman before, but it's also fun to branch out and try other soy sauces. This tastes radically different from ki Kikoman. Like it's, it's different. Um, I don't know, it, it, I think it's slightly better, but it's, it's very good. And then we have Mirin, which is um, sweet rice wine. Um, the problem is this is mass produced one and it has a lot of sugar, but what, what are you gonna do? Then we have rice vinegar, which we use to make quick pickles. Sesame oil. Uh, I use a little tamari also, which is fancy soy sauce. Gluten free, that's hilarious. Um, <laughs> um, and then I use a special ingredient called black vinegar, which I think we mentioned on another show, where you're watching some cooking show and you're like, wait, what's that? Black vinegar? I've never heard of that. Amazon, blah, blah, blah. So black vinegar is cool. It's a really nice ingredient. It has a very specific aroma and flavor. Um, if you have vegetarians in your group, it can sort of take the place of oyster sauce. I mean, uh, fish sauce, if you put sugar in it. Okay, so here we go. Dark brown sugar. I'm eyeballing this. And because you're a dinner partier, you can eyeball stuff as well. I'm making enough marinade to soak these ribs. So you're thinking in your head, how much liquid and stuff do I need to cover this? 
So you want some brown sugar. Look at, look at how beautiful that is. It's because it's been in my King Arthur Flower Sugar Keeper. So some brown sugar. This is what makes it sticky and glazy. Then I'm gonna put some mirin. I'm making a nasty liquid, essentially. Um, let's do this next, the vinegar. Stirring. Then we're gonna put soy sauce. A little bit of sesame oil, which is really just for the flavor because there's a lot of fat on the short ribs. And black vinegar. Stir this up. Give it a little taste. Tastes like Asian style short ribs to me. Ooh, that's good. And then because you're a dinner party, you're not afraid. You're gonna mess with it a little bit. Make it taste more like Asian short ribs you had. A little bit of pepper, and you're gonna put into the marinade some chopped shallots, handful, and a little handful of chopped, uh, what do you call them? Scallions, right. Now I'm gonna taste this again. Mm, that's delicious. Now, these have been salted for 10 minutes, okay? But I'm gonna show you that you can do this even if you don't marinate this thing overnight, all right? So I'm taking my salted ribs, which have a bone. That's a bone. These are particularly gorgeous. I'm putting them in the marinade. Bone side up, probably, so that the meat is in contact. We're gonna do a couple of other things for the dinner. We're not gonna marinate this overnight and it's gonna be perfect, you're gonna see. So kind of press it down in there. Depending on your time, you can leave it out of the refrigerator. If you're gonna leave it for three, four, five hours, put it back in the fridge. Hours we're gonna leave out. Edamame! What a great little tasty appetizer snack. So what you do is you go to the store <laughs> And uh, in the frozen section, they're always frozen, you buy a bag of edamame, okay? Which are soybeans. And then the day before or 20 minutes before your guests come, you boil some salted water. This could not be easier. And you cut the top of your edamame off like that. And you take the bag and pour it into the boiling water. What you're basically doing is defrosting them, okay? You don't, you're not cooking them, because they're eaten raw. You can do this and then drain them and put them in the fridge, or you can drain them and serve them slightly warm. But uh, you have to serve, remember, always serve this with a shell bowl, okay? Otherwise, they won't know what to do with the shell. And I'll show you how to eat them. If you've never had them, they're fabulous. They're also good for you, high protein. So the great thing about edamame is you can go to the store and buy five bags of them. And if you have a cocktail party, you suddenly have a super chic appetizer. So I'm gonna, these, I think these are defrosted, but I'm just gonna test one. And that's how you eat it. Uh, in my opinion, those are ready. What you're looking for is the bean inside. You're gonna hold it like this. Should be soft. Not frozen. Those are ready. I'm gonna drain them in the sink. I mean, this is an appetizer, okay? Drain it out. Put them in a cute bowl. And now this can go in the fridge when it's cooled a little bit, if you want to serve them cold. I'm checking another one. Mm, yum. Liberally salt. It's almost like serving peanuts in a, in a way, you know? How chic is that? Come on now. Mmm. Told them in a shell bar. Blah, blah, blah. Yes. I have been watching Housewives of Beverly Hills. I think the dog story is a little weak. So we're gonna make a really fun, easy dessert that goes beautifully with Asian short ribs because it's sort of soury and yummy and sweet. Uh, it's grilled pineapple with pineapple sauce 
and very special whipped cream, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But before that, you're gonna make the sauce, which should really sit for a little bit. It's essentially macerated pineapple. So I'm just gonna cut a lemon. I'm gonna use the only juicer. And this makes it so it's not cloyingly sweet. I don't like pineapple because it's so sweet. Now I cheated and I bought pre-cut pineapple because in my test for making this dessert for you guys, it, I just mangled the pineapple so desperately that I figured it would be better just not to do that. So I bought this, it's, ooh, look at that. If you can cut a pineapple into a circle like this, you're better than me. So I'm gonna take two slices of this basically to make the sauce. And I'm just gonna cut this into little tiny pieces. Put that in a bowl, put some lemon juice, a little bit of vanilla paste, and believe it or not, a little bit of sugar because you're macerating it, you're cooking it in sugar. So just a little tiny bit. This is what makes it into syrup. Stir that around and it's going to sort of cry, it's gonna macerate, uh, and it's gonna make more and more and more juice. And then you can, you'll see, you can use the juice only as the syrup, or you can use this sort of clumsily cut pineapple. I should have cut it nicer, but anyway. A little bit more sugar to make it a little bit thicker. And you can leave this up to, three to five days, or you can leave it, it should be at least one hour to really pull the juice from it. That's perfect consistency, it's kind of thick. Okay, and this is the easiest way to make sauce. We've talked about macerating fruit in so many episodes. Um, it's the quickest way to make sauce. Any fruit, if you leave it macerating and you don't wanna use the fruit, that's a fancy sauce right there. So this is the sauce for a fancy pineapple dessert with a very fancy cream or creme. The short rib dinner is quite rich, so I would serve this sans cake if you're serving that dinner. It could not be easier. What we're gonna do is take some pineapple, put it on this grill thing and put it under the broiler. Now, I did it outside when I did it before. It's easier and cleaner. And I'm not sure how it's gonna work in the oven, but I'm pretty sure you can do this in the oven, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. And I'm just gonna cut fairly thick slices. That's a little too thick, but fairly thick. Those are totally uneven and badly cut, but it's, a, it's our tradition. So I'm gonna put these in the oven. now. I have it at 470 convection broil. I'm gonna put a teeny little bit of salt on them, trust me. And I'm gonna put these in the oven and while we're doing the special creme, I'll keep my eye on them. They're grilling. Now we're gonna make the magic creme for our tropical dessert, which includes the world's most disgusting drink besides Advoca. Do you know what Advoca is? Advoca is a drink made from egg yolks. The only thing more disgusting than Advoca, or equally disgusting, is rum cream, cinnamon, vanilla, rum, cream, cinnamon, vanilla, rum, cream, cinnamon, vanilla, uh, 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 uh. rum, chata. Uh, what it is, is rum, cream, cinnamon, vanilla. But this stuff is excellent in cream because the, the, the rule is, if you're putting liquor in cream, it, it curdles the cream, okay? which is why years ago I told you to put Bailey's at Christmas in your whipped cream. If I put straight rum in here, it would make rum cream cheese, which is revolting. The first thing I ever drank was rum. I was 13. 
And we were sitting on top of the pony shed, which had no ponies. Me and Henry White, that's another story. And uh, we stole a bottle of rum from the liquor cabinet, like everybody's story. I didn't know what alcohol was. My mother had an incredible wasp tolerance. Like, I, I, I think she could drink more than anybody I've ever met, and you would never know she'd had a single drop. My father was a different story. So we took the rum, went up to the top of this little pony shed. We were sitting on the roof of the pony shed, 13, me and Henry White. We just started drinking the rum, right? Like, we didn't know what it, what it did. And we probably drank a half a bottle of rum, me and Henry White. I remember sliding off the roof at one point and then projectile vomiting all the way up the stairs to my bathroom and all over my bathroom and weeping and crying and agony, you know. And to this day, I cannot drink rum. It still turns my stomach. That's my rum story. So what we're gonna do is basically pour this into a bowl. This is cream. I'm gonna put some rum chata in. But I'm gonna, I need a spoon because I'm gonna, you don't wanna put too much rum chata in it. Reggie doesn't like coconut and the, the flavor con was confusing to the palate because it, it reminds you of coconut, even though there's no coconut because of the Rum or something, yeah, yeah. It smells a little bit like coconut, and Reggie hates coconut, don't forget that. Rum, cream, cinnamon, vanilla, rum, cream, cinnamon, vanilla, rum, cream, cinnamon, vanilla, rum, chata. <laughs> Needs more. You swore. You have to drink rum chata. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Whoa! Look at that, Nicholas. Whoa! Ho, ho, ho. It's nasty! Whoa! That's like desserty. I didn't know you were going to drink the whole thing. Oh. <laughs> Here, Hightower has to drink it too. <laughs> it's really disgusting. And we'll give some to Ashton and Lynn and Reggie. I almost called her Ricky for some reason. It's like rice pudding. Actually, it does taste like rice pudding. All right, this is gonna make a big mess. Um, uh, suggestion about whipped cream. Number one, don't do this in front of guests. David, of the Ma Madeline non-complimenting variety. David bought this new mixer. I swear to God, the thing whips cream in 45 seconds. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because it moves faster or what. It is a miracle. I'll get you, I'll, I'll get you the name of it. It's incredible. Anyway, this is my very good um, Durley, which I love. Whipped cream you can make in advance. It stays in, the, it stays in the fridge. Don't make it two days before. The same day in the morning is okay. Wouldn't it be funny if Henry White watched the show? I would die. It's definitely going now. That's pretty thick. Awesome. This is really good whipped cream, which I'm gonna cover with saran wrap and put in the refrigerator. First of all, I'm gonna make the top look pretty. La la la, la 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 la. The whipped cream can stay overnight. All right, so I did, the, I did these in the oven, which is a new thing for me. So they came out kind of perfect. Take my pieces of Pineapple, whoops. Oh, look how festive and yummy. Nice, beautiful. This is our sauce, remember? So first of all, I'm just gonna do this. Then I'm gonna spoon the little macerated pieces over. People love this. It's so simple, it's good for summer. Lovely at Christmas time. You could also um, chiffonade some mint and sprinkle mint over it. But basically, you put that in the fridge until you would like to serve it, and then you just simply bring it out with your whipped cream that has rum chata in it, and you just put them next to each other and they can take a round of pineapple and a little dollop of boozy whipped cream and go back upstairs to watch uh, another episode of RuPaul's Drag Race. May the best woman win. Enjoy your rum chata. It's Joe, my dog walker. Joe, come here. Hello. Joe Rome. Hello. Yes. Oh, 
it's so good to see yeah. you. He takes care of Leonard even during his bad times. Oh, sweet Leonard. Yeah, sweet Leonard. Hello, my old friend. <laughs> Hello. That's Leonard. Support his butt, Joe. Support Jeez. His butt. I got his butt. He's having a rough day. He's having a bad day? Yeah, he had a second eye problem. Uh -huh. um, but he's, he's doing all right. He's got okay. one marble open. Thank goodness. Let's right. get some fresh air. In exactly, it. Joe. Thank Let's you. Take him out there. He's pretty reluctant, but you should be able to get him to go. So now we're going to progress to browning the short ribs. Like any braise, the only color your meat is going to get is this phase and right at the end. So it doesn't color in the braise, except for the color of the liquid in the braise. So we're going to take our short ribs, which we've marinated for about an hour. You're going to take Distance Henry, your cast iron pan, whatever your pan is called, and a pair of tongs, okay? And you're gonna wait till this is pretty hot, and you're gonna put in some not olive oil, so anything with a high smoke point, high heat oil. Distribute it. I'm gonna check to see if it's hot enough by using this. Oh. No, needs a few, a few more minutes. Okay, I think this is hot enough, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the ribs that we've been marinating. I'm gonna kind of shake them off, okay? You wanna shake them off so you don't boil them in excess uh, liquid. So uh, bone side up. And the purpose of this is literally to brown the sides of the meat, okay? To give it color. This could actually be slightly hotter. If you miss this step, it'll look more like, well, this won't because it's got black liquid, but it'll, it, it'll look more sort of like American stew, which has unbrowned pieces of meat in it, but like a French braise, which is the correct one, uh, will have browned, almost crunch, crunchy, almost, pieces of meat. Uh, if you have a grill, feel free to do this outside. It's much easier, less mess. Nice, you want like this kind of thing. Like that. These are from a cow. They're not from a pig. Spare ribs that we've made before, those are totally different creature. As we always say, remember this was a living being, so buy it from somebody who's buying from somebody who's treating them well. There is a murder involved. There's no way around it, except to not buy it. <laughs> okay, these look good. It's smoking a lot. You know, if you live in an apartment, this could be a problem. Open all your windows. If you're really nervous, um, you could do it in your oven on, on the broiler setting, but you really gotta watch them. Uh, you can also buy these in, I believe Samin does it, in the, in the whole piece like that not, not cut into cubes, but I had them cut into cubes. Okay, these look pretty good to me. I'm gonna put these aside. Okay, now you could continue your braise in this pan in Distance Henry, but the problem is I actually used a pan that's a little bit too shallow. So I'm using a deeper pan, okay? So I'm moving that over. That was a slight mistake, but it happens all the time. You might want to brown and braise in the same pot because you have all these nasty crumbs and stuff that you, from the browning of the meat, but you also have to wipe it out a little bit because you don't want that extra fat. It's a 50-50. I just used a pan that's too shallow. So now we're gonna start the actual braising of the short ribs with a hot pan, olive oil. Do you know that Gordon Ramsay and Tana Ramsay just recently had a new little boy. Hooray! And then I'm gonna do a, a, a mirepoix, which is slightly more Asian in that it has scallions in it. Okay, so I'm gonna just do a base of dark purpley carrots, scallions, shallots, and onion. This is what we call making the nasty. This is the heart of your braise. So you want this to get nice and translucent. Did you guys make a bundt cake? Hmm? Did you make madeleines? Did your friends comment on them? Mine didn't. 
Oh, I played that for the guy who didn't comment, and he vociferously denied that they didn't comment. They didn't comment. David and Nick. Just like Cacovin, just like beef bourguignon, which we haven't done on the show, right? This is like the guts. And when this starts to get a little bit, I'm not using a lot of salt because of the marinade. When this starts to get cooked down a little bit, I'm gonna add the carrots. And I would try to use a lot of the purpley ones because it's a dark braise. So you want to um, keep it sort of dark and mysterious, you know? I'm gonna cook this. Now this is not how Samin does it. But it's her recipe, essentially. I was inspired by her recipe. I thought that show was great, and I, and I thought the acid episode was the best episode, and the second best episode was salt. The acid one was amazing, where they eat, where they eat that Mexican honey that's sour, and like, oh my god, it was so amazing. And they had that funny fruit. Sour orange. Sour orange, or bitter orange. Amazing, so fascinating. That's the reason to travel, you know? I'm just gonna deglaze a little bit. Oh yeah, turn it down a little bit. You can do this all the day before. In fact, I would recommend that you completely make this and put it in the fridge unskimmed. Take it out, skim it, and serve it. So I'll, I'll show you my way of doing it, which is that way. I'm gonna put the ribs back in. We've made sort of a bed. You can put them bone side down if they'll balance, but don't worry too much about it. And you're gonna pour in your marinade. Now I'm just gonna stir this because there might be sugar in the bottom. Oh! And we're gonna pour in stock. Um, she uses dashi, which is seaweed stock. I'm gonna use regular stock. You want to pour in enough stock that it's about three quarters of the way up the meat. I'm gonna pour this in to about there. Now, you're not boiling this, you're braising it. The braising liquid should never roll, except for right now. You're gonna boil it once and then you're gonna turn it down. And you wanna just keep an eye on it during the braise, you're gonna cover it. And it should, if it gets low, pour in a little more stock. You can do it on the stove top or you can do it in the oven. Heat the oven to 450 and then turn it down to 325 and put your covered braising pot in there. Some people will say it's an evener heat, which it is, but this works just fine. I'm gonna use the stove top. I'm gonna go like this. And then I'm gonna bring it once to a boil. Now don't worry about the to exposed tops. First of all, you're gonna spin them around a couple times if you want. And secondly, the steam condenses, this is how braising works, condenses on the top of the top and drips down on top. So the Asian yumminess will drip down on top of it as it braises. All right, we got a nice boil. You want an active boil. Just to say one more thing about the braising, what is, what is the temperature, right? So what does it mean? It means that you can barely see bubbles like this. It's not, it's not blah, 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 which is boiling the meat and it's not flaccidly sitting in the liquid. The liquid is slightly moving. So in the beginning, you're gonna have to check it a few times. Then you can go out and do errands, really, because it takes three to four hours. This might be too high, so in a few minutes, I'm gonna check to make sure it's not rolling boil. This might be perfect, but you never know. So that will stay with its for three to four hours. The honest truth is you could cook it overnight and you wouldn't be making a mistake. And now we're gonna talk about rice. So we made rice a while ago in another episode in a, this sort of French style. Um, and this is just another way to make rice that's really easy, it's two steps. It makes very fluffy, light, delicious rice as opposed to unctuous, rich rice, which the other one was. What you're gonna do basically is take Basmati is good rice, and it's good for this dish that we're making called Asian short ribs. So, you want about a cup of rice. And wh what we're gonna do is, we're going to rinse the rice. The big question is to rinse or not to rinse. If you rinse it, what you're doing 
is taking the dust from the manuf which rice dust, and the, a little bit of the starch off the outside of the rice. So I'm just going to put it in a sieve like that and rinse it. Just a little bit. That's it. This is basically how, <laughs> we're mentioning him a lot today, but this is basically, it's sort of a Gordon tip, but it's solid. So what we're gonna do is kind of perfume this, okay, for, to make it, it more special. I'm gonna season the rice now, it's easier to season it now. So I'm gonna put some salt, a little twist of pepper. And then to make it special, I'm gonna put a star anise, which is the flower of the fennel plant, or the anise plant. It's actually a slightly different plant. It smells like licorice, but it really makes a beautiful flavor in rice. You've probably had this in restaurants and not known it. This is cumin seed. I'm just gonna put a little bit. It's like we're perfuming it. Ooh, it already smells delicious. <laughs> and I'm gonna put a few pink peppercorns in. It's basically one rice to two water, or one rice to one and a half water. It doesn't, it doesn't really have to be precise. And I'm gonna pour the water in now, and I'm gonna bring it to a simmeringy boil, covered. I'm not gonna touch it. So when I pour this in, I'm gonna kind of try to get all the edges, and then I'm gonna bring this to a boil. Don't mess with it. The same way as the French way, if you mess with it, you're gonna break the skin and you're gonna get not fluffy rice. So we're gonna close that, we're gonna boil this. Basmati is um, quick, cooks very quickly, so it's about 25 minutes. And it will perfume the, the house. Let it boil, don't touch it. And then turn it down to a simmer so it's not moving the, the top, okay? I'm gonna turn you guys on to an awesome salad. Years ago in some, in Bon Appetit or something, there was a, some vegetarian restaurant in New York, and I honestly can't remember her name. It's a, it's a broad who runs it. She had this recipe and I was in the bath going, hmm, that sounds delicious. It's called charred broccoli salad. Now, I would normally use my grill, but because some people don't have a, a grill, I'm gonna do this inside. It's gonna smoke. Warning, turn off your smoke detector, but don't forget to turn it back on. Um, you're gonna take a totally dry, heavy pan. This is uh, not Conrad, but it's a small, um, actually cast iron pan, not uh, carbon steel. It's quite hot, I can't put my hand in it. I've cleaned some broccoli. You wanna wash this and then physically dry it with a cloth or leave it outside for the wind to pass through it. If it has a few drops of water, it's okay. The most important thing is that the pan is dry. There's no oil in the pan. And I'm gonna put in enough broccoli to sort of cover the bottom. There's a little water, but it's okay. And uh, what it does is it makes them, I don't know how to explain it, like it makes them into almost like little pieces of meat, Reggie, right? Like in the salad. It's, it's like a chewy, delicious thing in your salad. And you're gonna wait until it smokes, okay? Because it's called charred broccoli salad, right? You want blackened pieces of broccoli. That's your goal. This is um, my favorite salad. My poor dog, he had, uh, poor Leonard, he's had a st real struggle with um, eye ulcers and we think it might have been from the set, from the play, which you can watch the trailer of somewhere, which is over now. But anyway, he, he got all little cuts in his eyes and he had a procedure and then the, I took the cone off too early like any dog owner understands and he re-injured it and now he has one in the other eye. So he's really been struggling, but I want to make a major shout out to Dr. Sane and Eric at Greenwich Village Animal Hospital. They are, they were fabulous. And Dr. Sapienza at Long Island Veterinary Specialists because uh, they've been saints. It's been very, very stressful uh, being at the theater with the dog with the cone. And so those doctors have been a tremendous help to me and I really appreciate it. It's been, it's been rough, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it'll smell and it'll also smoke, which you want. And you just have to wait until it's black. Now, one word of warning, if you do use your grill, and I've done this, uh, don't take your eyes off it. 
You, I use a grill basket, like it's like this, but it has handles. You can get it at Amazon. Uh, but if you, it turns into literally charred broccoli, and you want it to be blackened broccoli, not not ashes, which is what happens if you leave it on the thing. This is getting too hot to use my hands, said the actress to the bishop. As we've said, this is not Conrad. His name is Distance Henry, after one of the characters in the play that we just closed. Strangers in the World, trailer, here. Also shot by Nicholas Goldner, who shoots Dinner Party Tonight. He also shoots our trailers for the theater. Nicholas, ladies and gentlemen, Nicholas. <laughs> That's your third trailer, Nikki? Uh, we did Dead End, High yeah. Noon, Strangers, yeah, it's third. and, and, and 1910. Oh, that's your fifth trailer. Fifth. Wow. If only there was a place where they could see all the trailers. It's beginning to smell and burn, which is exactly what you want. Don't be afraid. The char is what gives it that chewy. It's like vegetarians that I know will tell you that it's like finding a pro, like something in the salad that's so good you can't, you sort of can't figure out what it is. I'm actually surprised this is slightly easier than outside. It is making quite a lot of smoke, though. I want it a little blacker than this. I won't say anything. <laughs> okay, this is charring nicely. A little bit more, a little bit more. Do you guys know why crows don't check their baggage? Because they prefer carrion. You see, what we're going for is really black, blackness. I'm gonna go ahead and look at it smoking. I mean, I turned off my smoke detector, but it's gonna set off your smoke detector. Don't forget to turn it back on, because that's how things happen, okay? It's a little bit, tiny bit cold in New York today, just a little bit. We're getting slowly getting towards spring. I'm just gonna set this outside the window. You just want it to be in one layer so it doesn't uh, steam, and you're gonna set it outside. This makes a salad a celebration. Goodbye, broccoli. So for the charred broccoli salad, it's delicious served with sort of a tahini dressing, even with a little miso in it. Um, for the short rib dinner, that might be a little too heavy, but it does have lemon in it, so it could still work. It's up to you. So to make tahini dressing, which is pretty easy, you take, first of all, some acid, which is lemon, Okay, take a little bit of lemon juice. Some tahini. It's made from chickpeas. Might have been easier to pour it, but... A little bit of vinegar. This is rice vinegar, in keeping with the meal, sort of. I'm gonna emulsify this by shaking it aggressively. And then I'm gonna taste it. Oh, it's good. It needs a little bit of oil. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper. You're basically just putting tahini in a vinaigrette, okay? Instead of, say, mustard. And when we dress it, I'll show you how to do it so you don't overdress it. Mmm, delicious. A Little bit more salt and we're done. And you can store this in the fridge and just shake it up when you need it or uh, you can use it uh, today. I mean, it'll keep, is what I'm saying. Tahini dressing. I take my laundry to fluff and fold. I know what the fold is, but what's the fluff? That's what I write for the newspaper. <laughs> Anybody get that in here? Okay. So, we're gonna make salad with charred broccoli and tahini dressing, we're gonna assemble it. Number one, as you remember from Dinner Party Tonight, episode one. St. Elmo's Fire. That's correct. Yes! St. Elmo's Fire. I'll tell you the one we do at the theater that nobody has ever gotten. What movie does this come from? We've come to meet our friend. Come in on the train. Nothing's come in on the train but a couple of crates and a coffin. Our friend. Now, I know this one. Do you? Yeah. Do you know it for sure? Because if you know it, you know it immediately. It's obvious. 
So anyway, Dinner Party Tonight 101, never show your guests this. It doesn't matter if it's washed 300 times. They do not want to see you put salad from a plastic box. Everybody does it, but they don't want to see it, okay? So before they come, you take this out. Create the most beautiful accompaniment for the short ribs here. And now we're just going to sprinkle the broccoli over. This is totally room temperature or cold, the broccoli. And it's like a little surprise in your salad. Oh yeah, charred broccoli salad with tahini dressing. Fit for an emperor, which is a unisex term, world. So I'm an emperor and this is fit for an emperor. Charred broccoli salad. We're gonna show you two different ways to do these short ribs. One is overnight in the fridge and one is not. So this is what they look like overnight in the fridge. I skimmed it, put it back in the fridge, and now it looks like this. This is pretty skimmed, but I'm gonna go ahead and take off some of these white globules. These are fat. Believe me, there's enough fat in it. It's still gonna be deliciously yummy, but I'm just being extra refined. Then I'm gonna flip these ribs, look at that. Ooh, mama. And these are essentially uh, ready to serve. You can put these in the 450 oven and just sizzle them up right before you serve them. You're gonna have um, less burning because you've removed a lot of this fat. Now, these are ready to go. All you have to do is heat it. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this edge. With any braise, Tradition says it's better the next day. I've served this twice, same day, no complaints, okay? If you have the luxury of doing it the day before, do it the day before. But it's not necessary to leave it overnight. The French would say it's necessary, but there you go. Asian short ribs, ready to be crisped. Remember aerobics? Remember the grapevine? I did Jane Fonda. If you look at this, you can see there is at least a half an inch of floating fat. See this kind of transparent layer? It's kind of see-through on, then it gets underneath, it's dark brown. It's hard to see, really. There's a lot of fat here. In my opinion, you cannot serve it like that. Um, in the show, it appears that she takes it out of the oven and serves it. I'm sure that she refined it in some way. I think it's a missing step. And if I'm wrong, Sammy, I mean, I'm really sorry, but it looks, I truly am. But it looks like you took this from the oven and there's gotta be this much fat on it. Anyways, so what I would suggest is removing your short ribs and leaving the ones that are super fatty, but you now have an opportunity to pull some fat off if you want. And we're just gonna finish these in the oven. And I'm gonna show you simultaneously the ones that were overnighted and skimmed. They're both gonna go in at the same time. And what, what, what we're doing in the oven is kind of, what do you call it, like searing them in a way. And in the meantime, I'm gonna turn this up to a high boil. And what that enables me to do is skim some of the fat quickly off and spoon non-fat in. You'll see, it pushes the heat, pushes the fat to the center. See the wiggly shape in the middle? That is fat. If I wanted to get rid of some of that fat in the center, I would just do this. Because what you really want is a unctuous, gorgeous thing. Now it's doing it again, let it do it again. Take some of that top layer of that center circle off. I'm losing some liquid, no doubt. I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna wait for it to make the circle of fat. That's where I live. This is harder than doing it when it's freezing cold. When it's freezing cold, it's white and it's hard. Um, and it's much easier to break off, so you can just kind of break it off and throw it in the garbage. Okay, I'm gonna reduce this a little bit. I like the look of this. That looks good to me. It's still fatty. It's supposed to be a little greasy and fatty. That's okay. I think I'm gonna put this back in here, actually, because I'm happy with the way it looks. It skimmed well. Putting the bones in just because they make a yummy flavor, you know? Coating the pieces that we have. Anybody watch Ricky's new series? Pretty good. Not as good as Derek, but, but pretty good. So as you can see from our sticky, unctuous yumminess, 
It's always better to buy about three times as many ribs as you think because that big rectangle is gonna go like this. Remember those big squares we had when I was salting them? Hello. <laughs> okay, that's the meat part. Well, it's probably one layer, but I mean, come on. That's all you're getting, two little cubes? So these are the overnighted ribs. There's a little more liquid in these because I really reduced that. Those are gonna be sticky AF and delicious. These are gonna be sticky and yummy too. We're gonna throw them in a very hot oven, 450 convection with, with the broiler. And I'm gonna stay near the oven because they're already cooked. What you're trying to do is make a crispy top. So day before and day of, you're gonna see, it's really a matter of your mood. If you wanna throw these together in a day, why not? If you want to stick them in the oven or take them in the back of the car and put them in the fridge where you're going and then skim it, you can do that. They're indestructible. When, when the lights went out in New York for Sandy, I had a lot of short ribs from my brother's butcher shop, the Vermont butcher shop. I had to cook them, I had no power. And I made like, oh my God, 14 pounds of short ribs. And they kept perfectly for five days, just kind of in and outside, you know, in the cool, and I served them every night to anybody who came over during the blackout. Uh, they were a big hit. All right, so let's put these in the oven. Here we go. These are the overnighters. Um, they're cold and they're room temperature. So in they go under the broiler. And I'm also gonna put the ones that we made today in. Um, I reduced this uh, to kind of service level actually. So I'm gonna watch these carefully in there because they're gonna, they're gonna crisp up quickly. Okay, here we go. Excitement abounds. You're looking for bubbling crispy top. Okay, the day of ribs um, are sizzling, so I'm gonna take them out. I'm just gonna put some braising liquid over them a little bit just to keep them nice before I plate. And then you can do individual plating if you wish, or you can serve them in here with the spoon with a bowl of rice. I'm gonna show just a little plating on an individual plate for you guys. Um, okay, so this is our beautiful fluffy rice. Look at that, it's lovely. Scented with pink peppercorns, cumin seed, and star anise. I'm just gonna put a little bit of rice down like that, like a sort of a semi-bed on one side. Amaze balls, right? Look at that. Braising liquid, charred broccoli salad along with that, that's fit for a mother effing king, okay? That is a meal. These are the ones uh, that we made t uh, yes, uh, two days ago. There's a lot more liquid in these than in the other ones, which is nice. Basically, this has less fat. I don't know if you can see. Um, it's the same. I don't, I don't have to tell you again. It's basically a little more work on the day of your dinner party, if you make them on the same day. But taste-wise, well, it's always better to leave it overnight. I don't know. This has a little bit more liquid, so I would um, reduce this liquid a little bit by putting the ribs in a dish pouring this into a pan and boiling the crap out of it until it thickens a little bit, um, which I might do when we stop shooting so that we can eat it. Uh, short ribs, two different ways, your choice. Your friends are not gonna complain. I wanna talk about some pairings that you might enjoy with your unctuous, sticky, sweet, short rib dinner. Okay, so, um, it's, it's not light. The dinner is not light. The ribs are sweet and sticky. You don't want to serve it with a big wine. Even if you have one that you really are proud of and you want to serve, don't do it for that dinner because it's going to overwhelm the, the, the dish. So for something like this, you want to think, what, what complements something that's slick and sweet and sticky and yummy would be something that cuts through that, something that is light possibly acidic, um, uh, doesn't, it's not hot, meaning it's low alcohol, it doesn't burn your throat. So I would suggest a very crisp 
Alto Aldige, which is a kind of white wine, which I love. It's a Pinot, basically. Uh, you can get this from Fresh Direct. I think it's, it's under $20. It's not super cheap, but it's pretty cheap. It's like a lemon scented knife. Um, it's easy drinking, a great summer wine. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not an Alto Aldige. This is, a, sorry, this is a Pinot Grigio. But they, um, they have an Alto Aldige at uh, Fresh Direct. I pressed the wrong button. This is good wine too though. Most people would go for a Pinot Grigio or a Pinot Gris or not even Sauvignon Blanc. I would stay away from that. Pick something that's like a, has a blade edge to it. This one, both are from Fresh Direct. This wine, Pinot Grigio and the Alto Aldige, which sells for, I believe, $9.99 on Fresh Direct. I don't drink beer, except when I'm traveling. I love to try a beer that's from the place where I'm at. I went to India and they have a beer there called Kingfisher. And I drank three Kingfishers by the pool. I thought it was fantastic. And everybody who was with me said, oh, that's easy to get in the US. There's no problem, no problem, no problem. I came back, I said, oh, I had this great beer, Kingfisher. I've never seen it over here in a store. Not, not once, never seen it. So if anybody can find Kingfisher or tell Kingfisher that I love their beer and they should send me beer, it's superb beer. It's crisp and fantastic. It's lovely. Anyway, Peroni, crowd favorite. Lynn loves Peroni. Um, our friend John loves Peroni. It's a light, crispy lager. You want something that's got that cutting edge to it. It's a good thing I'm not on the pony shed roof with uh, Henry White. I can even remember what I was wearing. It was a pair of patch jeans with patches. This was 1976. And uh, a man's shirt, which was the thing in the 70s. A yellow men's button down shirt tied, you know, above your waist. So I would always suggest Josh, remember? You get drunk, but then you're suddenly not drunk. Always a plus. And then this, now look, this is not fancy, okay? It's not fancy. It's preserved in, in steel vats, which some people believe uh, gives you heartburn. And I've got to tell you, they might be right. <laughs> if you go to Napa, you can see them. They're like big, they look like uh, water towers almost. And they're, they're where they store the wine. Practically, I would say 70% or 60% of American wine is made in, those in these steel barrels, where it sometimes is transferred to a wood barrel. However, Pinot Project, I'm gonna bring this to your attention because we drink this at the theater. It's inexpensive. Um, and it drinks really beautifully. It's light, it's a different style than Josh. It's a Pinot, uh, meaning it's a burgundy. Drinks light, a little bit fruity, but it passes quickly. For this meal, I would stay light. Crispy, lager, Alto Aldige or Pinot Grigio, cut through the meat. And a, and a red wine that has a light, bright, transparent quality. You don't want something that's too thick to see through for this meal, not good. And basically that's it. I met somebody who worked on Housewives, believe it or not, Housewives of Beverly Hills. And it was interesting to talk with somebody who's been humiliated by all her friends because uh, she works on Housewives. And I said, you tell your friends this, it's a fashion show. And I have, I work in the theater and I have stress, my dog is sick and, you know, I have all these things like everybody else on planet Earth. And to turn on that show and watch somebody's tracksuit with the red camouflage, who's that? You're surfing the web, you're talking to your friends, you're watching the show, oh, what's that necklace, blah, blah, blah. It's fun. Everybody settle down, it's just fun. If you don't like the show, you don't have to watch it. Or as Jay-Z said, if you don't like my lyrics, press fast forward. Today we made a beautiful early spring dinner with edamame for cocktail hour. Then we had Asian style sticky short ribs served with cumin scented rice with star anise. Oh. Then we had charred broccoli salad with tahini dressing with lemon. Just a lovely crunchy bite to go along that beautiful dish. And then for dessert we had roasted pineapple served with pineapple syrup and rum chata cream. What a dinner. Listen, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's been really stressful. He's definitely getting better. Uh, he's older, so it's been real slow. 
He's closing his eyes, of course, because we're shooting now. Please uh, let him get better because he is my greatest love and my constant companion. Anyways, I love him and he seems to be better. I want to thank you guys for watching Asian Short Rib Dinner. We're going to proceed for more episodes, more full dinners, because I know you guys like the full dinners, and uh, maybe some small shorts. Thank you so much for your appreciation of my new hip. That was very heartwarming to me. And we want to thank you guys from the bottom of our hearts. You have no idea for watching the show for five minutes, let alone watching it long enough to make smart, intuitive comments about what we're doing. It means the world to us. Thank you so much from Dinner Party Tonight and Leonard, who just growled, which means he's feeling better. Rum, cream, cinnamon, vanilla, rum, cream, cinnamon, vanilla, rum, cream, cinnamon, vanilla, uh, 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 uh. rum, chata.